Hello guys, my name is Nishant from HackingTalks.com uh, I've been looking to make a series of video tutorials lately about hacking and IT security but didn't get myself a lot of time to do it. Now that I have some time done for myself, I thought to start it. And uh, well, to start with, we're actually going to cover a lot of things when it comes to hacking and different types of hacking. So to start with, there are uh, two types of major attacks that takes place. First is a user specific attack where you know who your victim is and you are basically attacking your victim's computer to get his credential or whatever you're looking for. So that is a user specific attack. Basically suppose if it's your friend whom you're trying to hack you would probably hack into his computer to get his passwords like Facebook or, or email passwords or anything of that sort and a second would be server attacks server attacks are nothing more than you are attacking a specific website like Twitter attacks or Facebook attacks where you know who your victim is but at the same time you might get a lot more than what you're expecting so server attacks are not so specific but you know what you're trying to target. This video is for cross-site scripting which is also known as XSS. Now if you would see it's written as cross-site scripting. So logically uh, the short form of the cross-site scripting should be CSS. But the problem here is CSS already stands for cascading style sheet. So we cannot call it CSS, hence it's called XSS, which is a short form of the cross-site scripting attacks. Now, before we get into the cross-site scripting, what exactly can we do with XSS? Well, there are a lot of things. You can get access to any user account. You can get access to even the admin account of the website. Also, you can actually get the entire database of the website and get mass access to all the users of the website. So possibilities are actually infinite, it's just about how you do it and how you imagine doing things with cross-site scripting. Next thing would be types of XSS. There are majorly, there are only two types of XSS. One is persistent XSS and second would be non-persistent XSS. Uh, these are the major types of XSS. Uh, if you would go by the dictionary, Persistent means something that's permanent and non-persistent means something that's temporary. So uh, both of the attacks have their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, we will have a detailed series that will give you full information and full disclosures to this attacks. To start with, uh, let's just go through what is XSS and what exactly it does. Uh, I've set up a, a test kind of page where you know I can demonstrate a little bit about the XSS and that is a live page so even you can visit it that's at www.hackingtalks.com slash practice now this is a simple page what it will do is whatever you type in and you click on submit it will echo out it will show you the same te text what you type for example if I type Nishan here it will show me Nishan so basically cross-site scripting takes place when the user inputs are not filtered. When I say user inputs, we mean any place where a visitor of a website can input the information. It might be the search box, it might be the command box or reply on forms or anything where a user can input information that is a potential cross-site scripting vulnerability. Now, it happens only when the user inputs are not filtered properly. Let's take a look at what I'm trying to say. Uh, here, if I just do, uh, let's just do an underline and do test. Sorry about that. Okay, so if I'm doing an underline and then doing a test, basically, uh, U would mean underline in HTML. And if I click on submit, you see it is underlined, which means the HTML language is not filtered through this form. So if I again just do elec 
and underline and then just type Nishan you see it has all the effects that you typed in which actually should should have been filtered to prevent any kind of attacks now cross-site scripting is about injecting malicious codes like JavaScript and everything probably so JavaScript including JavaScripts in this boxes and harmful codes which will give you the access to something you are not supposed to for example if I just type in script alert 123 this is a little piece of code that will give you a pop up that says 123 you see there we have it so if I pass this URL to some to any other person once he opens it he will get a pop up in his browser that says 123 so this is something with which you can scare the people with you know popping up boxes that says you're hacked and you are affected and whatever but that's not exactly what we're looking for uh, there is something called as session cookies basically when you log into something in any website for that matter let's say gmail when you log into gmail uh, specific session cookies are all allotted to your account so those cookies will stay alive when you're logged in and the cookies are given to you after you put in the password and validate that you are the authorized person to the account so if the hacker can manage to steal those cookies from your browser he can really log into your account without even having the need of the password and he will be able to stay logged in until those cookies expire so here with JavaScript that is a script alert document dot cookie and script if you click on submit it is actually popping up the cookies of my uh, of my uh, user session if you would see since I'm using WordPress to the parts of hacking talks these are the WordPress cookies of, of my session so if you would if you can get these cookies delivered to you you can actually log into my account and do whatever you want so there are ways with which you can get these cookies sent to you without even me having notified it you know so these are the things in which we'll have a look at in detail in the next parts which is going to be part two for non-persistent cross-site scripting and part three for persistent uh, cross-site scripting attacks and there's going to be a part four which will be a little more advanced uh, uh, advanced techniques in, in cross-site scripting so I'm gonna stop this video right now because YouTube wouldn't allow me to put more than 10 minutes and that will be all for this video. I'll see you in the next part. Thank you very much folks. Have a nice day.